All right, so we saw our vertical translations. Let's take a look at some horizontal translations. So keep in mind, if you are moving horizontally, that's like this. Do you think this is changing the x's or the y's of your function? This is going to change the x's. So that's why when we see a function right here, g of x equals two raised to the x power, if we're adding or subtracting wherever the x is, so up in the exponent with, an, with x, inside absolute value bars of x, inside a parentheses with x, that is gonna be a horizontal translation. So, if we have an x plus an h, or x minus h, that represents horizontal translation. What we need to remember though, is that it is a tricky x. Tricky. So x plus h is going to shift to the left h units. x minus h is going to shift to the right h units. So let's just take a look at an example. Let's say that we have the function g of x equals two raised to the x plus three power. So what we wanna recognize is that x, it has a plus a three, that's our x plus h. That means we are going to translate Translate is the same thing as shifting. Translate to the left three units. So what else does that mean for our graph? If you're translating to the left three units, you're not doing a vertical shift up and down. So your asymptote isn't going to change from our default asymptote of y equals zero. So if all we're doing is translating three units to the left, we still have an asymptote of y equals zero. Our y-intercept, well, we could find that, right, by plugging in a zero for x. Two to the zero plus three is two to the third, which equals eight. So this y-intercept would be zero, eight. So the y-intercept does change. Um, we might need to just algebraically find it. Our domain, does it not change with a horizontal translation. It's gonna be all real numbers. We also could say it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. That captures every single real number for our domain. The range, because the asymptote is at y equals zero, the range is gonna have our y's all greater than zero. Okay. Um, I am going to do this and say, why don't we just think about the function? Um, let's say h of x equals two to the x minus, I don't know, let's say four, x minus four. All right, so what does that mean if you have an x minus four? That is going to translate our function. It's gonna translate our graph. Four units, well, actually, tricky x, if it's a minus four, it's gonna to shift to the right, so it's gonna to translate to the right four units. That's how our graph will change. So if all we're doing is translating left and right, your asymptote does not change. That is still y equals zero. Um, again, your asymptote only changes if you have a vertical shift, a vertical translation. 
our y-intercept is going to change if our graph shifts to the right four units. Um, so let's just find it. We have 2 to the 0 minus 4. Again, any um, y-intercept you can find by plugging in a 0 for x. So 2 to the negative 4. When we have negative exponents, we move it down. That's 1 over 2 to the 4th, which is 1 over 16. So our y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 1, 16th. Um, the domain does not change. All real numbers. We also could write that it's going from negative infinity to infinity. That is interval notation. Um, the range, let's look at the asymptote. That kind of helps guide our range. Our graph is going to approach this line y equals 0 but never touch it. Um, so all the y values are going to be greater than 0.